So here's the Teamer Aetherworks Marvel deck. Um, this is actually the exact list that I played at the Pro Tour myself, so I can personally advocate for it, say that I really like the list, um, and I, I was one match away from top 8 with it. So it's the mana base, it's 23 lands total, so a little bit more than some of the other lists that are out there, but because we're playing so many lands, we can afford to have Lumbering Falls. It's a land that gives us something to do. It's another card that's pretty tricky for the control decks to deal with. There's also one red-green cycle land, which is the Sheltered Thicket. And you'll notice that we have a decent amount of red lands here. Um, so that helps us hard cast Sweltering Suns out of the sideboard. So I've been pretty happy with the mana base overall. One island to search for with the tune, two mountains as well. But you really want a green source in your opening hand the most because we have a tune and servant of the conduit. So green is by far the most important color of the three. A tune with aether, it's a great synergy card with all of the energy decks. Pretty much any energy deck in the format is going to have a tune with it as long as you're playing green. Woodweaver's Puzzle Knot. I really like it, especially in game ones, as an easy way by itself to get you up to the energy necessary to activate an Aetherworks Marvel. And it works well alongside Whirl of Virtuoso as well. And it's pretty annoying against aggressive decks because it's, it's a lot tougher to kill you if you're at 26 life or, or so on. Servant of the Conduit. Um, this is a card that a lot of the Marvelists actually aren't playing, but I like it a lot, especially in sideboarded games, because a lot of the removal heavy aggressive decks, they're going to be taking out removal spells, boarding in discard spells against you. And if your opponent has less removal in your deck, Servant is even better, but it's just a good card. Even if it dies, you still have gotten that energy out of it, similar to your other energy creatures. And then, of course, four copies of Harnessed Lightning. That's the removal spell that's best suited to the energy theme here. Um, so just sometimes you can go up, kill a, a Verdurous Cure Hall, kill a huge creature, or you can say, get rid of a Crypt Breaker. Y you've already gained two energy on that exchange. So these are just a staple card in the deck. One Aether Meltdown, so this is nice um, against some of the vehicles decks, like Mardu Vehicles. Um, it's just a versatile removal spell that also gives you energy. Then we've got four Rogue Refiner. This should be pretty self-explanatory. Self Good creature, gets you a card and energy. You pretty much never board them out. Um, Whirl of Virtual, so it's a little bit different. Sometimes you can shave on Whirl of Virtuosos or even cut them all together in certain spots. But in game one, there's decks that have trouble handling these stopters and also in sideboarded games. And it gives you something else to do with your energy other than spinning Aetherworks Marble. Now, of course, we've got the four copy of Aetherworks Marble. You're never going to want to board in Aether board out Aetherworks Marvel. It's the signature card of the deck. It's the card in game one that gives you the most free wins. And it's why you're playing these Ulamogs in your deck to begin with. So card is amazing. Um, pretty much anyone even somewhat familiar with the deck is knows what this card does and why it's so important. We've uh, This list also happens to have cards both in the main deck and in the sideboard that are good finds off the Marvel activation outside of the Ulamogs. We've got four Chandras total, one small one and three big ones. So the Chandra Torch of Defiance, it's good in the mirror um, because you can get it down and most of the time your opponent can't immediately attack and kill it. So you can get lots of advantage off of it. 
It's not as good against Heart of Kirin decks or against small creature decks, but it's another card that can be used as removal. It's versatile. Um, it can help accelerate you up, up in terms of mana towards your bigger plays. But the more important of the Chandras is the Chandra Flamecaller. This card is amazing against the small creature decks like Zombies, which is probably the second most popular deck in the format right now. Um, especially because there's both white, black, and mono black zombies. But um, yeah, the card, it can sweep away lots of creatures. It can discard your whole hand, draw cards, that comes up. And then also just making the elementals can kill your opponent. So it's really nice to be able to spin a marvel and know that either an Ulamog or a Chandra Flame Color will just be great for you if you are able to find one of those cards. So, of course, four copies of Ulamog. A lot of times after sideboard, you will board out Ulamogs, but game one, you just want four in your deck. Um, it's the e It gives you easy wins. Spin Marvel, hit Ulamog, you know, normally you're all done at that point, especially if it's early in the game. So, sideboard, four copies of Tireless Tracker. This card comes in in the mirror. It comes in in almost every matchup because... Your opponent's going to be boarding in more interaction, so you want another way to win. And Tireless Tracker provides card advantage. It's another threat. So really nice, versatile cyborg card here in the trackers. Sphinx of the Final Word, it's really only here against Control. Um, so blue-red Control, it's, a, it's still a deck. And this is a way, it's probably your most difficult matchup, actually. And this get, can potentially give you free wins against control because of how difficult it is to deal with. One Confiscation Coup. So the Confiscation Coup, it can take an Aetherworks Marvel, it can take Annoying Creatures, it's good against Black Green, which is still a deck, so really like it. Um, it's only a one of because it is a five mana spell, but um, I can see playing one or two in the list. Sweltering Suns is great against zombies so this is the card that can sweep away all of their little dorks like chandra flame caller except that it's three mana and it can also you can also cycle the sweltering suns which sometimes comes up but normally in the games where you can board it in um you're not going to want to cycle it you're going to want to hard cast it but i do like it more than radiant flames because it's a good hit off of Marvel, unlike Radiant Flames. The two Manglehorns are for... You can board them in in the mirror against like the Gearhawk plus Marvel version of Marvel. They're actually pretty good. Um, but they're also just great against vehicles as well. So very versatile card against any deck with artifacts. You want to consider the Manglehorns. Dispel and Negate. Um, classic counter spells. Comes in, of course, against control decks, but also in the mirror. Against any grindier blue deck, you want them. And then the one Magma Spray is against aggressive decks. Being able to exile creatures, it turns out, is pretty good against zombies and vehicles. So, yep, this is the Team Remarvel deck, and I'm really happy with it.